you scared, eh? You haven't seen the blackboard. <laughs> this a professor arrived. <laughs> Usually they talk for one hour, and so I have to compress my speech to stay within the limits. Burada Olmak Çok Güzel. I have to ask you uh, forgiveness because I will tell you something about my life. But it's for the uh, sole reason that uh, my ideas and my life are one thing. It's impossible that I can talk about my ideas without telling about me. I started my career most one century ago in, uh, in multinationals in uh, great organizations, because that was my dream. I studied economics, business, because I wanted to work in great organizations. Travel and uh, be, uh, have uh, teams, international teams, to work with. My description of the world was simple and clear. Work hard, study, try to make it uh, and uh, find a good job, and raise a family, try to be as happy as possible. Very simple. The parable of life was uh, so described to me by family, environment, and of course by school. Teachers of uh, boredom, not the Mr. Aji that we have just met. Uh, prophets of doom and gloom. That's where our, uh, they described life to me, as of course, probably most of you. And uh, I followed this uh, scheme, this mental uh, scheme, and I... I have to say that something happened. Uh, when I was 29, I lost my wife. She was much younger than me, and I lost her, and I was left with two children, very young. That's changed my vision of the world and my description, uh, the ordinary description of the world fell in pieces. And I, I found myself uh, posing uh, some questions and probing myself and trying to find out why I made these choices, why I married so young, why I had two children, why I had that job. I asked myself to know what was motivating my life. And what I discovered, you want to know? You want to know what I discovered? What is it? What, dro what drove my life? What was the engine of my life? How did I make my decision? All my decisions, even choosing my wife. What was the real drive? Fear. I realized that we do everything by fear. We go to work, we choose a work, we choose a, a, a partner, we choose a job. If you go deep and you are sincere, deep in yourself, you will find that motivation is fear. Then I also realized that fear is a ghost, does not exist. Try to answer this uh, Little Cohen. Fear knocked the door. Courage went to open. Nobody was there. We remember it. We'll discuss it maybe afterwards. I will stay a little bit around. I have enjoyed all the people that have been before me, and especially Mr. Haji. Where is he? He went. Mr. Haji. I would propose to have him as a Minister of Education in this country. <laughs> but I'm serious. Close yoke. Get free the children. They have to be worried how to be admitted in universities. They have to have a, a horrible exam that will exclude anybody who is a, as a, 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 a uh, maybe a, an international background in the family, they will never make it. So you are excluding it. 
they have done a good job in excluding some uh, good children because they have become entrepreneurs out of universities. They have become better people, for sure. Then, uh, considering that fear was uh, running as a, a, a drug in the bloodstream of humanity, and not only in my life, I thought that uh, there are people who have overcome fear. There are people who, he doesn't tell, he doesn't listen to my translation. Aji, Aji is not listening to me. No, it's, it's my habit to find always a student that is sleeping somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sleepy students are not the worst. The stupid are, 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 are much worse. <laughs> so I made a discover that I would like to share with you. There are people who have overcome fear. There are people who have overcome time. They are not blackmailed by short-term objective. They don't live by day from hand to mouth. There are people who have a sense of infinity. They put a fragment of uh, eternity in what they do. Who are they? I start asking myself, where are these people? Who, who is preparing them? Because I realize that we own them everything we are, everything we have. They are the benefactors of humanity. Behind anything good, beautiful, interesting, rich, there is always one man. There is one of these men. I realize that without this man, we cannot make it. And unfortunately, they become less and less. Mr. Aji arrives and everybody is relieved. Finally, a man doesn't bring worries, doesn't bring uh, uh, fear. You know, it's a success. He eliminates fear. And I said, this is the success. That's what we have to do for humankind. We have to prepare more people who have defeated fear. I see that you don't have earphones. Either you don't want to understand what I said, or you are all perfect in English. Are you perfect in English? Compliments. Compliments, you know. If I go to Italy, I will have five translators. <laughs> This, I don't know why, this is a, a, a torture instrument. Okay, this, uh, so once that I defined very well what was the issue, what was the problem, we need these people, they become less and less. They are like uh, the red uh, cells. You know what are the red cells, the globuli rossi? They, they carry oxygen wherever they go. We need them in the organizations, we need them in politics. We need them in business, light people, simple people, powerful, believing in themselves, people with a dream. Simply, we need dreamers, and we don't have them. We do not produce them, we don't know how to do it. So, I changed my dream, and I switched from business and international organizations to education. I said, this is where I can bring a contribution. This is where we can bring a solution to the world. And I used my skills, my preparation, to create a university. I created a university that uh, got very great success with uh, thousands of students with a new idea. And also campuses from uh, from London to Madrid to New York to Italy. And uh, the idea was simple. We need people of integrity. We need timeless people, not blackmailed by time. We need dreamers, capable to harmonize business and ethics, to harmonize financial power and love. I worked to this project for almost 15 years. I was the founder, the rector, and I wrote a book about how I created this school, what were the principles I based this school on, trying to inspire other universities 
to go in this direction. But then I realized that though it was an excellent university and many students uh, were becoming uh, valuable people in any field, they were not the students, the leaders that I was dreaming of. They were not. They were not the new cells, the new intelligent cells of humanity, unfortunately. I could not find the formula yet. So, in December 2010, on my birthday, I left my school. I vacated my chair of a sociologist. I left the foundation in New York, and I started from scratch again. And uh, my new idea was about uh, a new dream. A larger dream, not just a university, not just a, a formula, but uh, a dream for the world. So I will invite you to watch this uh, video that I've prepared to give you an idea of what I mean by it. A dream for the world only three protons away. The difference between an atom of lead and an atom of gold in their respective atomic number is only three protons. One is 82, the other is 79. There is a humanity 82, heavy, dull, unworthy, like an atom of lead, and there is a humanity 79, shining, incorruptible, like an atom of gold. A dream for the world is this transformation, this evolution from lead to gold. Just one man of integrity would be enough to change the destiny of a corporation of a nation or an entire civilization. We are only three protons away. So I discovered that uh, the key word, the password for the future, the word that can save the world is one. It's called integrity. I also heard from uh, uh, Oral, Mr. Oral, where is he? Mr. Mr. Oral told, talked about unifying. And also you talked about stopping analyzing and uh, getting to the point and, uh, and being there. Uh, so we are here to present an idea. I think that we have to bring integrity as the central value of human life and also of uh, uh, our uh, nations. To save the world, we have to unify, to be completed. This should be the mission of uh, education. But we hardly talk about it. And still, this world is so powerful. We are surrounded by a message of integrity, of completeness, of unity. We are surrounded by it. There is a word which you, you know, certainly, which is universe. Is there any larger word than universe? Universe. There is not a larger word. Universe is, universe is, a, is a, 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 a Latin root. Versus. Versus. Unus. Which means. Towards one. 
universe. It's the, the direction of universe towards unity. Universities are schools to prepare for integrity, to prepare individuals, individed people, unified people. Unless we do this, we will have not a solution for the world. It's impossible. So I, also, also in your tradition, centuries ago, schools in this country were called the culier. What does it mean, culier? Huh? Complete. What? So completeness. They understood more centuries ago than today. <laughs> it's incredible. So I went to Konya and I found a message from, uh, from uh, uh, Mevlana. And there, on the, on the, before you enter in the mausoleum, on the door, there is something written. Nobody looks at it because it's written in, uh, it's not in Turkish. I think it's Farsi probably. So I called the director of the museum and uh, of uh, the mausoleum and I said, please, can you tell me what is written there? I said, thank you very much because nobody asks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was risking to forget what is there. And, and uh, what is written there? This is the Kabe of uh, lovers. You arrive here incomplete and you go out complete. Nobody reads, nobody knows. But these words should be written on all the universities of the world. You enter incomplete and we give you completeness. This is our job, this is our mission. We have to prepare complete people because incomplete people will betray, will steal, will uh, will uh, will uh, will uh, will uh, will uh, try to to get their their own uh, uh, benefit they will never be at the service of the world of their nation never unless we prepare people who have unified themselves so the uh, at this point we have to understand the secret of education is under our nose is there is built in the world go back to the black pardon and, uh, and um, is there education. Everybody talks about education. What does it mean? It means ex duco. Duco means to lead and ex means out. Just the opposite of what we do. There is nothing to add. There is something to eliminate. This is a true education. True education is to eliminate fear, to eliminate limits, to eliminate prejudices, to eliminate all the obstacles to our creativity, to our joy of living. So what, uh, what I, I said, okay, we, are, we should lose the first proton. The first proton is time. We are blackmailed by time. We only work for short-term objectives. We think about today. We live from hand to mouth. Who is thinking in, in uh, long terms? This is my last baby. Uh, a dream for the world. So I wrote a book about my idea and about my belief. And here, page 10 is written. You cannot read, huh? So why did you do this slide that we cannot read? <laughs> Ali, this is, uh, I will give you a bad mark. <laughs> one day, one day we will eradicate poverty. One day we will make friends out of mortal enemies. One day we will create a world without pollution and cure all illnesses but it will not happen in my lifetime, and probably it will require hundreds of years. Now I pose you a question. Can you answer in honesty and sincerity? Can you do that? Can we try? It's a test. How many of you would work today, start today working for something that we can achieve maybe in 1,000 years? Raise your hand. I always thought that Turkey is a, a country for dreamers. Thank you very much. 
And, uh, <laughs> and it's not by chance that uh, my next project I created here, three years ago, a center to prepare these dreamers. There is not a school for dreamers. We don't care. We don't know that they are the intelligent cells of the humanity, that without dreamers we will disappear, that many civilizations have disappeared before us just because they had no dreamers anymore. This is the real problem that we have. This is the source of all our evils. This is why the planet is in the conditions that it is. We have problems that we have not solved in millennia. They're always the same, criminality, wars, pollution, uh, illiteracy, uh, famine. They're already there, always there in the Stone Age and in the Digital Age, without energy and with the atomic energy, because a man is not changed. And if we don't change through education, there is no other mean. And education means ex educo. We have to prepare lighter people, not heavier. We have to, that's why Haji, I think, should become a minister of education. Because, <laughs> maybe he has to be a little bit with me to refine the language, but in reality, it's, it's a school for dreamers. He has showed us school for dreamers. But he has nine students, what can he do? Can he change the world with nine students? Yes, Haji, we can change the world with one student. So I said, how can we uh, eliminate this proton? Time. Time kills us. You know the myth of a chrono eating their children. What is the warning? If you believe in time, you will be devoured by time. You are a child of time, time will devour you. I didn't bring the Goya, the Goya painting and that, uh, because they are terrible. This God devouring a, a child. But in reality, this is what happens. We are devoured by time. How can we eliminate time? I was inspired by Mosk, your uh, Jami. Stefano? Yes. You I have, uh, okay, thank you, I, I can go right now. <laughs> I was telling uh, something about uh, Jami. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, the, uh, when you go to the uh, mosque, you leave the shoes out. But what is the deep meaning of leaving the shoes out of the mosque? You are leaving the time out. You are leaving the world out. Why? Because you, enter to, you are entering in another world. Because there are two worlds. One is the world of our external life, the other is the world of our inner life. When we enter in our inner life, we have no time. Our ideas, our imagination, our intuitions are out of time. They have no time at all. And there we can find the solutions. There we can find ourselves and understand what is our mission in life. So I have prepared an agenda, a little tool. I have patented, so don't try to steal it because it's already patented. <laughs> and I have brought them with me. So later on, maybe I can present it to you and we'll have more time. Ali is a tyrant. Thank you very much. Uh,